Alrighty, welcome back. Uh, welcome to my messy garage. Uh, yesterday I started section 28. Uh, did not record anything, at least on these first two pages here. You're honestly not missing out on anything, just a whole lot of repetitiveness, uh, which I think I've done a lot of in the past, which is uh, installing nut plates, countersinking, uh, putting parts together. So you'll see on my messy table here, uh, just basically, literally just putting nut plates where it calls out in the plans. Uh, building assemblies where it calls out and just kind of one-off little parts here. Um, this one here, I think these are the bulkhead side channels. Um, got these put together. Again, nut plates. And then uh, this little spacer of some sort. And then a countersunk for uh, dimples of a number eight screw. So uh, nothing too fancy. Uh, today we're actually moving on to a little bit more of a fun part, which I think will be fun to have on camera, uh, which is making this component here. So the control column mount. So you'll see off camera, I went ahead and matched over measurements uh, to each of these components. So I have one left and one right component, mirror image of each other. And then um, kind of already, you can see, I'm already marked out where I'm gonna be cutting, where I'm going to be drilling a hole. So I already have these marked out and um, center punch, so that's ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead and upsize those two there. We're gonna upsize them to a number 12 drill bit. And then we'll actually go ahead and start removing material from these. Anyways, these will be pretty cool looking at the end, so we'll get to it. to page 28-5, step number four, uh, which mentions studying the figure here to make sure that we have the proper orientation for the skin here, because uh, it's not symmetrical. So if you're looking for clues, looking for where to, where to find where your clues are, uh, look right down the center, or at least that's where I have found where my clues are. You'll notice each of these brackets here, they'll stagger. So the first one starts favoring the left side, right side, left side. So looking up down the tunnel here, probably hard to see in the reflection, uh, but I'll point them out. First bracket, left side, second bracket right side, third bracket left side. Uh, so that's how I have found the proper orientation. So I went ahead and wrote on it. So I remember, so if I move this or anything, uh, find the cold off, if you wonder why I'm sound stuffed up, I've got whatever bug is going around getting everyone in the Phoenix area. Uh, so fighting that off, you notice my voice sounds different. Uh, but anywho, we're gonna get to it and get to building this portion here. Next step, looks like it's gonna involve putting all these uh, under floor ribs in and uh, yeah, work it up from here, and then eventually this part will start to get very, very big, very, very quickly, so we'll get to it. This thing is coming together. It is getting big very quickly. Uh, but floor panels are in. Did not have to do any match drilling. Yeah, so when it comes to instructions that call for match drilling, I have in this section been fine not match drilling. There have been a couple of parts earlier on, I think last section, uh, one of these parts in the corner, they were not final size. But anyways, this current one, this current chapter, so chapter 28 for my kit, Everything has lined up, everything has been final sized. The way I check it and make sure is I go ahead and grab the longest of whatever size rivet I have. So like for instance, I'm checking all these eighth inch rivet holes. 
Uh, just grab the longest rivet I have and just make sure that it, it lines up and drops through wherever uh, it's supposed to fit. Uh, but that's how I check. I've heard of others using the back end of a drill bit. Um, but it makes quick, easy work just verifying. Because uh, for all I know, one of these parts is going to be uh, one off and not final sized. And then that's going to be a pain when it comes to assembly. <laughs> Start putting these together and realize, oh shoot, this part was not final sized. So anyway, that's how I do it. So I'm going to move on to the next step. Next step, I think, involves taking a couple pieces off the back end here and actually getting that big, huge center spar dealio there. Um, put on here and match drill to verify that it lines up. Anywho, gets involves putting that on there, making sure it fits, and then eventually we'll be able to uh, unassemble all this dimple or deeper than dimple countersink where needed and start riveting this together. So we'll get to it. So I'm gonna to try to solo make these two together. I don't know if I'm gonna to do it. Um, I'm probably not gonna have the greatest camera angle. I probably also won't leave it recording. Well, we'll see how far we can get. Uh, but I don't just wanna burn through a whole bunch of footage leaving the camera in the corner if I'm not gonna be able to be successful. But my plan right now is I should be able to prop this side up. This is really, really light. So I should be able to prop it up, uh, put something underneath it, and get the skin to line up and slowly roll it towards the table here. And I'm hoping that I can get that skin to come underneath, uh, or underneath, or on top of this skin here, underneath this flange. I think that's the way the sandwich is supposed to work. Uh, but anyways, I think I should be able to prop that side up, carefully bring it together, possibly mate it together, um, or this could just end up being a giant show. So anyway, we'll get to it. We'll see if I can knock it out, and uh, I'll keep you posted along the way. Being final size, uh, I don't know if I had to really put these two together to get them mated to do any kind of match drilling. Uh, everything lined up. I did not have any issues. After I clicked out everything, test fit it with rivets and no resistance whatsoever. Holes all lined up perfectly. So I ended up not actually match drilling anything when I had them together. Um, so was that necessarily required for me? Probably not. Uh, was it satisfying? Heck yeah. Uh, it honestly, it didn't take too long to do. It was probably good to get a trial run and get things these two put together uh, by myself. Um, so I don't know, it, 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 I would say it's worth it for like the satisfaction of seeing them come together. Uh, but now, taking them apart, I wanna jump into the next section. Next section involves, I think, putting net plates on places, countersinking in places, kind of working on more assemblies in this area here. And uh, yeah, get to a fun uh, little uh, music video time lapse. Enjoy.
two-wheel drive. I got them in four-wheel drive. Ooh, so I'm ready, you're ready to, to rock. <laughs> So you probably noticed the uh, different color Clecos there. Uh, they are still the standard size, but the reason why they're not the shiny silver ones is um, I like to, whenever I whenever I can really, um, use my Papa's old Clecos, his old Cleco pliers. They still work well, um, but it's kind of neat to be able to use his stuff on the build. I figure it's a good good portion to use it on right here, joining uh, two such big assemblies, uh, being able to uh, hold them together, line it up, and uh, start the final assembly of, of this big structure here uh, using his Clecos. Alright, so what you see here is us going back in plans quite a ways to finish up the remaining rivets that Amanda and I were not able to get to where the skins overlap each other. Um, so um, who you see there is actually Justin Poet. He is another RV10 builder. He has a great Instagram channel. I'll include a, a, a screenshot of what it looks like on the screen here. Um, but great Instagram channel uh, named the Poets underscore RV10. They're doing a really good job of documenting their build. Um, so he was actually in town and reached out to me asking if I needed any help bucking any rivets. And sure enough, I had this big section here where I couldn't get to it. Um, so Amanda was very grateful uh, that I was able to do this um, and get this knocked out with Justin. Uh, so thank you again, Justin, for coming by to help out. It's great being able to chat with you and kind of pick your brain on your build. So one thing I wanted to talk about that I did not get video footage of, unfortunately, uh, was the way I installed the VA-188 uh, mounting bracket for the uh, either the flow scan or the FT60 Red Cube. I don't know which one we're going to go with, but you'll see here on the screen, Vans calls for you to choose one or the other based on whatever one you're choosing uh, that dictates the uh, net plates that you use on that bracket. Uh, but again, I don't want to pigeonhole myself into making any of those decisions now. Um, so I was actually able to install all of the net plates. The way I did it, you'll see here in the picture of the installed uh, VA-188 uh, that I actually put a spacer under one side of one of those net plates. And what that did is it allowed me to share a rivet. Uh, so you'll see that bottom right rivet there. That's shared between two net plates. And then I actually installed a um, same thickness piece of aluminum that I match drilled the hole as well as the uh, the rivet hole and then cut it out in this 
janky looking pattern here. So what that does is it supports the nut plate um, at that same height as the other nut plate that it's stacked on top of, and the hole is still supported as well. Um, so if I do end up using that one, I may end up needing a, a little bit longer of a screw. I'm not sure yet, uh, but if, if I do, that's fine. Uh, but my worry was if, if I just went with, like, say, a washer on that top rivet, that nut plate could theoretically uh, flex in the middle there with that hole being unsupported if you really crank down on it. So it is fully supported. So that's how I did mine. I just wanted to share this in the video here because um, most people, people I think probably get to that point and think, oh shoot, I gotta make a decision now. So that's how I'm doing it. I don't have to make a decision now. I could wait until the future. And if I install one and I want the other one way down the road, um, the opportunity will be there without having to, to pull that little uh, bracket off. So if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Uh, Section 28 was a lot of fun, really satisfying to get all these components uh, so big so quickly. Uh, Section 29 is gonna be even more fun. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very involved. I have it started in the garage right now, um, but it'll be a good one. So keep a lookout for that one. Again, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Adios.